Hey gents, welcome to another episode of Wheelchair Wednesday! And this is where I talk about my life in a wheelchair and some tips and tricks and uh, you know my daily life living in a wheelchair for almost nine years. And today I am talking all about life with a super pubic catheter because that is what I have, that is what I use. That's what I have used for almost eight years now. There's really not a lot of talk about it on YouTube and in the YouTube community, and there's also really not a lot of talk about it in the wheelchair community. So I thought I would come on here and talk to you guys a little bit more about it, give you some information and some tips and tricks on my life with a catheter that stays in 24 7 365 and see if it helps anybody so let's begin so if you guys don't understand or know what a super pubic catheter is i'm going to give you the definition and i'll also write it right down here but the definition is a surgically created connection between the urinary the urinary bladder and the skin which is used to drain urine from the bladder in individuals with obstruction of normal urinary flow. So basically right above my vagina on my hair, like right above my hairline of my vagina, um, they made a little surgical incision that is about an inch long and that is where my catheter goes into my bladder and um, I blow up a little balloon that is connected to it to keep it in place. So here are my tips and tricks and advice to you guys if you do have a super pubic catheter or if you are a caregiver or if you are a newly injured individual with a spinal cord injury or any type of injury. If you don't have 100% control of your bladder, this might be uh, a really good idea for you because I cannot self cat. So the very first thing, number one, is you definitely want to keep your site clean. Now you can use baby wipes, you can use warm water and some uh, soap and basically every day when I take a shower I just, you know, wash it as I would normally would and that's pretty much it. That's all you really need to do. You just really want to make sure that you keep it really clean so you don't get any sort of bacteria or infection around your site because that could be a really, really big problem. Number two is change your catheter and your bag on a scheduled basis. Now, with my urologist and I, we have decided that I can keep each catheter in for four to six weeks at a time. So now I'm gonna get in to show you guys what I use for my super pubic catheter and this does change for every person individually but I'm just gonna show you guys what I use personally. This is the actual catheter I use. I'm not gonna take it out of its package because it is sterile but inside you can see it is just a very flexible rubbery tubing and this is what actually goes inside of my body and you can see there's a little hole there which is what the urine drains out of and it also creates a balloon so it does stay in place. Now on the other side, this is what you put this little piece right here, which is connected. This is where you fill your balloon and um, when you are going to change your catheter, you can either deflate the balloon by using a syringe or I just cut mine, just this little piece right here. And then this piece is what connects to my bag. And this is by the brand Bard. It's what I've been using since I've had a catheter. And it's nice because each time you get one, you know, they come in sterile packaging. And this is an 18 French catheter. And they also have the expiration date on there, which for this one, it is nine of 2020. So obviously they last a long time. The second thing I use is an insertion tray. And an insertion tray is everything that you need to insert your catheter into your body. So I will actually open this up and show you guys what is in there um, because it's okay to do so. So the first thing you get are a pair of sterile gloves and they just come in this little paper packaging. Then you get a little pad that you can lay all of your supplies out on. Then it also comes with this little thing which I actually never use. Um, you can kind of put it around your cath site. I never use these. What I use these for is after I have cut the balloon, I stick this right on my cath site to catch any urine if it does come out of my site. Normally I 
change my catheter myself and I do it while I'm on the toilet because it just makes it easier. But you can do it when you're in bed or you can have your caregiver uh, change it for you or you can go to your, your urologist and have them change it for you as well. So the next thing that it comes with are some iodine swabs. There's three in here and these are just little swab sticks to clean around your cath site. Next you get a syringe of sterile water which is what you're going to inflate your balloon with. And lastly, it comes with some lubrication. And basically what you do with this is you put a little bit of this on the very tip of the part of the catheter that goes inside you. So it does help um, go into your body. So I use one of these every single time I change my catheter. And then the last piece of supplies is my actual cath bag. Now again, this is by Bard and it is a latex free urinary drain bag. Um, this one is 2000 cc's and I love these. They're really, really comfortable. They hold a lot, which is good because that way you're not draining your catheter every, you know, hour on the hour. Um, this also makes it really easy for me to sleep because I don't have to get up and drain it throughout the night. So I just changed my catheter this morning actually, so I will show you um, my bag. I won't show you it all because obviously there is urine in it. So this is kind of what the bag looks like and it does have a little hook so you can hook it to your chair, you can hook it to your bed. It also comes with a little green clamp and I always clip this to my pant leg because I it makes it the same place. So that is all of the supplies that I use for my super pubic. And like I said, it only takes me like five minutes to change because I've been doing it for a while. Kyle used to change it for me. And then one day I got a blockage in my calf bag while Kyle was at work. And I had watched him do it so many times that I was like, all right, I'm pretty sure I could do this myself. And it actually has become a lot easier for me to do it myself because when I'm actually putting the catheter in, I can feel where the stop point is. And you will be able to, if you have any feeling or sensation in your bladder or your pelvis area, you will be able to feel when you can't push it in anymore. The easiest thing to remember when to change your catheter is mark it on your calendar, put a reminder in your phone, um, something so you make sure that you are changing it on a very regular basis because if you leave it in for too long they have been prone to create infections um, you can get UTIs which obviously nobody wants so kind of going on with the second one is number three is if you can learn to do it yourself I definitely would because that way you don't have to wait around for somebody to change it for you um, actually, the last time I went to my urologist, uh, they had to take my uh, super pubic out to do a procedure and I asked them if I could just put it back in myself, if I could change it myself. And everybody in the office was like, what? You can, you can do this yourself? I said, yeah, it takes me five minutes. And pretty much almost everybody in the office that worked there came into my room and watched me change it myself because they said they've never seen anybody be able to do it by themselves. But your girl can, so that's pretty cool. So if you can learn to change it yourself, I definitely would because it just makes it a lot easier. Number four is get your supplies regularly. Now I have a medical supply company that I get all of my supplies through. I also get other supplies like gloves, wipes. Um, I can get syringes to um, irrigate my catheter, which I'll talk more about in a second. So make sure that if you're just coming home from the hospital, make sure you have all of your supplies set up. And again, once you can get them most of the time, once a month, it depends on what your doctors and, and you discuss and how often they want you to change it. Mine is once a month. So I just put a reminder in my phone every month to make sure that I call because it can take up to a week to get your supplies. So pretty much every three weeks I call because by that time, by the time I get it, it's time to uh, have my supplies again. So again, going along with number four, number five is make sure that you irrigate your catheter at least I'd say once a week at the bare minimum. I get 60 cc syringes um, that are empty and I also get 
sterile water in like big containers that I use to flush my catheter out. So when I do that, I just disconnect the bag from the actual tubing and then fill the syringe up with the uh, sterile water, stick that in, push it in, reconnect my bag, and just to make sure that you're not getting any blockages in your calf line because that could lead to leaking. Number six is kind of a no-brainer, but make sure if you do take bladder medications, I take two, um, make sure you take them on a very scheduled basis. Same time every single day. Again, set a reminder in your phone if that will help you to remind yourself to take them at the same time every day um, because that is just going to make your life a lot easier when you don't have to deal with your bladder problems. Problems. Number seven, cranberry juice is your friend. I personally love cranberry juice and I could drink it with any meal at any time of the day. Um, and I've liked it since I was a kid, but cranberry juice obviously definitely helps when it comes to bladder management and with UTIs and kidney infections and kidney stones and all those things. So make sure you got some cranberry juice uh, in your fridge or in a cupboard, you know, and It'll help. Trust me. It'll help. <laughs> Number eight is kind of again along the same lines as the cranberry juice, but you want to make sure to stay hydrated. Now, obviously, if you're an able-bodied person, um, you don't have to worry about what color your pee is and, you know, uh, getting UTIs and bladder infections because you don't have the equipment. I mean, obviously, able-bodied people do have bladder infections and all that kind of stuff. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but for somebody who is in a wheelchair, you have to make sure that you stay hydrated because if you don't, it could lead to so many other uh, medical problems. So just make sure that, just like me, you keep some water nearby at all times and that's always what I have. Number nine is just make sure that you keep your calf line unkinked. Make sure that you know, you're know you not sitting on it. Make sure that there is a very clean line from your catheter to your bag to make sure that urine can flow through it very easily because you get a kink, you leak, it's a big mess to clean it all up. So just make sure that you know you don't wear really tight pants if you have to feed your calf line through your pant leg like I do. Um, you know, obviously I can't wear skinny jeans, which I prefer not to because I don't like skinny jeans personally on me. Um, so I always have to make sure that when I'm wearing jeans, that there is enough leg room for my calf line to uh, be fed through. Number 10 is a big one. If you feel like there's a problem, do not hesitate to call your urologist. Now, a few months ago, actually, my balloon that holds my catheter in place popped while it was still inside me. Um, I had never felt a feeling like that. I knew exactly what it was, though, as soon as it did because it was right in the site of my catheter where it goes in and I freaked out. This had never happened to me and it really, really worried me because I didn't want a piece of like the rubber to have broken off and have be staying in the track where my calf line is. So even though it was after hours, I called my doctor, they called me right back, you know, the on-call urologist, and I actually had to have a scope done to make sure that there was nothing in there Thankfully there wasn't, but even if, you know, you have some questions, that's what the doctors are there for. They have most of the time on-call doctors after hours and on the weekends, so you can always call them if you have a question about something or if you feel like something is wrong. And if you feel like it can't wait, definitely go to the emergency room because you definitely don't want to mess around with those types of things. Now, number 11 is something that I was actually told by my urologist or the nurses like in the urologist office is when you're changing your catheter, they actually do suggest to not suck out the water with a syringe that is holding your balloon in place. They actually do tell you to cut the little piece that is holding that water there to drain it um, to be able to pull it out because if you use a syringe, you could potentially not get all of it out. Um, and if you pull too hard, you're gonna tear your track line, which obviously would mean having to have a surgery, 
uh, to fix it. Now again, if your balloon breaks inside of you, call your doctor immediately because that's what I had to do. Um, that has actually happened to me twice now. It actually happened to me this morning, which I was like, what the heck? I still actually had like another five to seven days left of my catheter that I had been using right now before I had to change it. And it just broke inside this morning and I was like, what the heck? It is a very strange feeling. Um, it, you know, just think of basically like a rubber balloon that's inside of your pelvis popping. Sorry if you can hear my dogs barking, but if your balloon breaks while it's still inside, call your doctor immediately just to make sure that there's no problems. Number 13 is if you are not draining properly or you feel like there is a blockage in your line, either irrigate your catheter with the sterile water or change your catheter immediately because if you are if you have feeling down there or if you notice that your um, urine is not coming out on the regular I guess you could say because on the um, Foley bags that I get there's actually a line to show you how many cc's are in your bag at a time so it's really good to kind of keep it track to see how much you do urinate throughout the day because that way you also get a really good idea of like where your numbers are. So like if you are drinking your normal amount of water and beverages during the day and you're not seeing the lines or the level of your urine kind of coincide with that, that could mean a little bit of a problem. And number 14, the last one for this video, you guys, is bladder spasms are normal, but they still suck. Um, not gonna lie. I would rather have body and leg spasms than I would have bladder spasms because pretty much when you have a bladder spasm, at least in my case, uh, it feels like your bladder is just going like that and it's in an iron vice, which sucks. Um, so that is why I suggest all these tips and tricks because it will help you not have bladder spasms, um, or at least try to keep them at bay. Also things that cause bladder spasms, high sugar and caffeine. I have actually had to cut out caffeine pretty much altogether in my daily routine because I was noticing that the caffeine levels that I was drinking were a direct correlation for all of the bladder spasms I was getting. So I still drink pop or soda, whichever one you wanna call it. We call it pop here in Michigan. Um, but I drink caffeine-free Diet Coke. So you can also just drink, you know, if you love pop or soda, you know, you can still drink it, just choose one that doesn't have any caffeine in it. Um, or if you like coffee, switch to decaf, tea, same thing. Uh, or just be very, very careful with how much you drink a day. And that's pretty much it for this time, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it a little helpful if you have a super pubic catheter or you're thinking about getting one or if you're a caregiver that takes care of somebody with one. I hope it helped. If you guys would like to see any of my other Wheelchair Wednesday videos, I will put a playlist down in the description box as well as a card, hopefully right here or somewhere. But definitely check the description box for all my social media sites. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you feel like they're too personal and you don't want everybody else reading them, please send me a message on Facebook. I will definitely get back to everybody that asks me any sort of questions. If you have any other questions about my life in a wheelchair, I would love to do a wheelchair Q&A, so please leave your questions below if you have any of them. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit that little red button below. Subscribe, become a member of the M's Gems family. I love you guys so, so much, and I'm gonna go do another Wheelchair Wednesday right now for you guys, so if you see the same hair, and makeup and outfit. Well, I always wear this shirt on wheelchair Wednesdays, but if you see the same hair and makeup, that is why. So I love you guys so much, and I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye!